Hi, I'm Beth Comstock. I'm here at GE Crotonville, our training center, where we're hosting our Leading and Learning Conference. I get to speak with an amazing leader, Dr. Mae Jemson, who's a researcher, an astronaut, she's leading space exploration as a platform for innovation to figure out not just how we succeed in space, but how do we make life better on Earth? This is the future in five. Dr. Mae Jemson, thank you so much for joining us here at GE's Leading and Learning. Um, we're here looking at leadership, and you've been an amazing leader and role model for so many people. You're a scientist, a physician, a researcher, an astronaut. How, when you were deciding what you wanted to be when you grew up, how did you decide of your many passions that science was something you wanted to pursue? Well, when I was growing up, from when I was a little kid, I always said I wanted to be a scientist. I remember in kindergarten saying I wanted to be a scientist. But I also liked to dance. I also liked to do lots of other things. So I went into engineering in undergraduate school, but I also did African studies and linguistics. It's very frequently that people think that there's only one role you can do. I love our, that. our career changes, right? And so when I boil it down, I realize what I'm interested in for me is exploration. I'm interested in creativity. Different people have different things they want to do, and you figure those pieces out. But it's less about the profession and more about the kind of person you want to Such be. great advice. So we're uh, at GE pushing to have a lot more women in science and technology. We've made a commitment. Mm -hmm. What do you say to young women who are considering a career in science? What encouragement do you give them? So here's the thing I'd say with, to, to women or anyone. You belong there. I think the biggest issue people have is whether or not they belong and they do belong there. And so it's usually not the problem with the young girls or the young women, it's the problem with the folks around them. Professors who don't see women as their colleagues. So the change actually has to come with the professors, the uh, supervisors, because a lot of women will get their degree in engineering or um, the physical sciences and they'll come out and they'll be shuttled off to someplace else because they're not appreciated as a colleague. And so we have to actually have to make it um, the responsibility of the supervisors and the professors that they keep this incredible talent in their pool. So how do, you, how do you encourage people to have the courage, if you will, to be different? I mean, that's one of the things I love that you speak out for is difference and different mindsets. How do you, how do you encourage people to have that courage to, to be different? Um, I think the way you have the courage to be different um, is that you don't do it just because it's something, but you do it because it's inside. And if it's inside of you to do this one thing, you know, you're probably gonna fail on things. You have a sense of humor. If you have a sense of humor, take yourself seriously and the work that you do seriously, but don't overextend it into the world has to do things exactly like you want them to I do. I love that sense of humor. You're talking about flexibility. Last question for you. You are leading a project called 100 Year Starship. Yes. I love the sound of this. It sounds like a platform for innovation. Tell us about it and how should we, how should we, how can people get engaged? 100 Year Starship is about trying to make sure we have the capabilities for human travel beyond our solar system to another star in 100 years. And it was seed funded by DARPA in order to create a platform that really pushes radical innovation because you can't do it using the same energy sources. You have to have sustainability built into your systems. You have to understand human microbiome, so many things. Um, we want everybody involved. Um, the best way to get involved is go to 100yss.org. 100yss.org. And one of the things you are, you're trying to do with this is to make life better on Earth. It's not just about space exploration. I think that's a really interesting perspective. It's really because we're all going to be on this planet. The vast majority of us so. for years to come are going to be on yeah. this planet. And so what space exploration has the ability to do is to push us in terms of innovation and to be able to create things that will help us survive on this planet. The challenges of interstellar travel mirror the challenges that we face in this world today. Well, I love your vision, your courage, your passion. Dr. Mae Jensen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.